こんにちは。はい、こんにちは。あじゃあ、えー、自己紹介お願いします。はい、あと、はじめまして、皆さん。あと、ゲブです。あと、28歳です。アメリカ人です。ウェストバージニア出身です。イワクニに住んでいます。うん、僕の趣味は、筋トレとダイビングと旅行と犬を散歩することです。いいですね。うん、あ,のありがとうございます、うん。どうして日本に来たんですかアメリカに行った時、いつも日本に住みたかったです。でも、うん、どうすれば住めるかわからなかったです。えっと、もともと英語の先生になりました。うん、でも、他の仕事が3つ借りました。もともと1年あ日本に住む予定でした。でも今、えー、あ2年目で今のところ日本に住むのが好きです。うん、Feel like learning Japanese is too damn hard for you.Stop slaving away at grammar, words, and spelling.Now there's a better way to learn how to speak Japanese like a normal guy. Welcome to Terumi's podcast. Let's learn Japanese in just two months with Terumi's learning method. So, can you actually a little bit explain who you are in English? Yeah, of、mm. course. Um, so, um, I'm from America, like I said. I,、um, I'm from West Virginia. I went to school to be an engineer. And、mm. after living in America for a while,、uh, it had always been a dream of mine to live abroad. So, I applied to jobs in Germany and in、mm. Japan. Those were my top two choices. And、uh, wow. I ended up getting a job in Japan first. So, I came to Japan.、Um, and my original plan was to just be here for one year. So, I asked my boss at my job in America to take a one year sabbatical. He said that was fine, which is very rare in American culture, but he was okay with it.、Mm. Uh, and I came to Japan. And then after being here just a short amount of time, I called him and apologized and said I had no plans on going home anytime soon. Amazing. So,、um, since when you actually felt like you want to move to a different country? And also, why like the J- Japan and Germany that the choice is coming up?、Um, so, ever since I was little, I love traveling. So,、mm. um, I've been all over Europe. Uh, I've been to almost all 50 states in America. I've been to Canada、wow. a few times.、Um, and of all the places I've traveled, when I graduated from college, the first place to celebrate, I went to Japan. And it's just the culture and everything about Japan is so different than America. It was、mm. so exciting.、Um, mm. Even traveling Western Europe, it's still pretty similar to America,、mm. um, at least I think. And so everything was so different here and it was so much fun. Uh, which is why I think it was my favorite.、Um, but I've always wanted to live abroad. When I was in middle school and high school, I、mm. used to study Chinese.、Mm. And I had an opportunity when I was younger to do a study abroad program in China. And I passed it up in order to graduate high school early, which I regret. And then I went to college and I had the opportunity to go study abroad in Italy for a year, but I passed it up to.、Uh, Graduate early as well. And so I graduated college when I was 20 and I went and got my first job as an engineer. And it was really difficult kind of settling into a day to day mundane engineering job, working、yeah. long hours. Everyday routine, that, right? Like a really nine、yeah. to five, right? There's no traveling every day, like just a nine to five every day, right? Yeah. And it gets so boring. And then after five or six years, COVID happened.、Mm. And I hate to say this, it sounds bad, but COVID was really good for me because it kind of shook up my life and、mm. it made me sit at home in quarantine and realize that I felt like I had made some bad decisions in my life. That、mm. I made a lot of money and I had a great job, but、mm. my life was boring. So、mm. I decided to take that opportunity and move abroad. Yeah, amazing. So, like, you actually start living in Japan, which is your it was dream come true. And then、yeah. maybe you kind of missed to communicate with the people because the language is a huge barrier. And then you try to learn Japanese, and that's why you contacted us. So, before you contacted us, like, what kind of thing you try to try to learn Japanese? Yeah. So, before I came to Japan, I had、mm. studied Japanese a little bit、mm. um, when I was in college. 
Uh, I took a class randomly. I had to fill up enough hours for one of my semesters. And um, I had studied Chinese in the past, so I figured, oh, Japanese will be easy. Mm. So I tried that. Um, and then before coming to Japan, I took a course over Zoom to learn some Japanese. I bought all the Genki textbooks and started reading through them. Um, but then when I got to Japan, uh, it it was better than not doing any studying for sure. Mm. Like I could read some signs. Uh, I usually didn't know what they meant. Like just because mm. you can read hiragana doesn't mean you know what it means. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think one thing that stuck with me was uh, when I first came to Japan, this is kind of funny, but um, I went on a date with a girl and I was trying mm. to speak Japanese. Uh, she knew English pretty well. And she she was joking with me that I sounded like a kid because I always just said words. Mm. I wasn't able to express myself through sentences. I would say like, you know, sakana or just mm. random nouns and pointed mm. things. Like you're like a little kid. You need to learn how to express yourself. Mm. Um, and so I went to an English cafe for a while in town mm. uh, to practice with people. Um, I'm definitely not a shy person. I'm very talkative. Mm. but it none of it really worked well for me mm. uh, and one thing that was always hard for me was confidence too so even if I would read in a textbook how to say like uh hukuro ichi mai murate desu ka, to ask for a bag at the grocery store mm. uh, I wasn't confident in how I was saying it so I would mm. like whisper and if I would say it to the person and they'd go eh? I'd get super nervous <laughs> and I'd just keep all to English <laughs> Um, so I really wanted to coach someone that could say it to me, listen to me say it that way when I was in those situations. And I'd say, you know, hukuro ichimai murate desu ka, that, mm. and they go, eh. I would know I said it right. And I would say it again. Mm. Um, and I think That's that true. Jeff really did that for me. Mm. So I had been to an English cafe that um, they were like round table style and you would sit and talk to people. Uh, I was mostly Japanese people and they would try mm. speaking um, English and I would ask them to help me with my Japanese but a lot mm. of times we'd end up defaulting to English because they knew more English than I knew Japanese mm. so it's kind of you become English teacher and they more speaking English to you yeah in the end of the day well, I think uh, one thing too that really helped that JLF kind of changed my mindset on as well was I used to really have a problem with if I would speak in Japanese and someone would respond to me in English I would just go back to English, mm -hmm. which in Japan happens all the time, especially mm -hmm. in service industries. If you're getting like a ticket at the Shinkansen or checking mm -hmm. into a hotel, uh, if you speak Japanese, they're usually going to speak English back to you. Then I would just speak English. Mm -hmm. Whereas working with uh, Chihiro Sensei, she would tell me, you know, just stick with it. Like even if they speak English back to you, they might be practicing, but always speak Japanese. Um, and also... I would often uh, tell people like "moto nihongo renshu shinakya," which means like mm. I need to practice more, I need to speak more. And usually, people would just like giggle, and then they'd speak Japanese. So mm. that was helpful. Amazing! Can you actually share with me what kind of things you try and uh, mainly during the master course? Yeah. So um, my first experience with master course was actually I was in Yamanashi on travel because I travel every weekend. And I had called you to discuss potentially yeah, uh, I remember. joining. And uh, which I believe you said you're from Yamanashi, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but one thing that I thought was really interesting in our first phone call, and now I understand it better, but at the time I didn't, was you were really trying to figure out what my goals were and why I was practicing Japanese, which wasn't what I expected when we had our first call. I figured, you know oh, she runs the company. She's just going to instantly like try to get me to sign up. She just wants my money, um, which was <laughs> not my experience at all. It was, you know, asking what are your goals? Are you sure this is right for you? Um, and now I'm, I better understand that. Um, I do think, you know, for people that are studying to pass a test, I don't think JLF's right for those people. No. Um, but I think if you're living in Japan and you're studying to pass a test, you're probably not doing the right thing, yeah. uh, which is what I was doing when I first got here. I thought, you know, JLPT level three is conversationally fluent. So I just need to pass the test. Then I can speak. But then I met a few foreigners here that were level one and had Japanese jobs and they couldn't speak Japanese very well. Uh, they were good at textbook, but they weren't good at conversation. And that made me kind of change my mindset. And then 
starting the classes, I think what was really helpful at the beginning was having uh, Chihiro kind of put me in these situations that living in Japan, I go through every day, like going to a convenience store or going through the airport or checking into a hotel or getting my hair cut at a barber or taking my dog to the groomer. Um, and all these situations that you don't have to be great at Japanese. You just have to, they're kind of structured conversations, right? When you walk into 7-Eleven, they're going to ask you mm. the same questions every time and you're going to respond similarly. Mm. Uh, and I was always kind of against that method of learning originally because mm. I always thought, well, I'm only going to know those situations. And so it's funny because when I started JLF, at first I was a little upset. I was like, no, I want to learn Japanese, not just how to regurgitate a sentence. But then after, you know, 15, 20, 25 lessons, I started getting to the point that I'd used these sentences. I had talked to people and I was starting to figure out how to, you know, create the sentences I wanted. Um, and it gave me the tools to go out and make friends and talk to people and I think, you know, JLF kind of got me from a point where I just knew random vocabulary and random grammar to now, 30 lessons later, um, I can not only can I go through a train station and get my hair cut and everything in Japanese, but I can also go to the Sapporo Yuki Matsuri, the snow festival and mm. uh, talk to random strangers in line or go to... Tokyo and sit at an izakaya and strike up conversation with the owner. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as a talkative person, it makes my experience in Japan so much better mm -hmm. to be able to strike up conversations with strangers and have those meaningful connections that are hard as a foreigner. You know, I understand a lot of actually language learners say, I want to learn everything. You know everything not just only situation yeah. like a restaurant or no i just want to learn everything but the everything never happened because you can't memorize it and in yeah. order to memorize it we have to start using it that's the very difficult part to understand you start because you will be able to speak by speaking so which means you have to start speaking today in order to learn how to speak you yeah. can't prepare how to speak without speaking. <laughs> I agree. And once you say things, one of the mm. things you had said in one of our group lessons that I think was really valuable is when I started studying and a lot of my coworkers that have studied in traditional methods talk about is how difficult it is to get down certain grammar structures or knowing mm. when to use the right particles, um, which I think when you speak it more and more, you kind of get a sense for when you say something, you go, Oh, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't yeah. feel right saying it that way. Um, you just kind of intuitively understand. Like, I don't know that I could write you a textbook definition of when to mm. use which particles, but at least I feel like I have a decent understanding of mm. where to put them because I've spoken enough and I've had conversations with people. Exactly. So that's how you speak your mother language, English. Like, you really don't know what actually the system is so much, but it's, you have a sense that it's, oh, this is you're saying right or wrong. And it's sometimes you can't explain why I have to say it like this way. And that sense you really need to get in any language. If you, now you're learning Japanese, then now you have the sense that you are actually speaking right or wrong. But what if you don't have this sense? How are you gonna actually speak? Maybe should I say this or this or this? Do you know the answer? No, maybe I don't know how to speak. That's very, you know, difficult to build your confidence to say something correctly. And that's a very difficult part. Um, people actually should try to speak from today in order to learn how to speak. And that's actually gave, you actually really try to speak every day. I can really see you mm -hmm. are actually really using everyday life, right? You're not shy at all. Like you're not hesitating at all. That's amazing. Yeah, I think it makes a big difference. Um, and I think as you practice and speak more and you get more comfortable with it, you really start to see how much it affects your day-to-day -day life. Um, mm. Just last weekend, I was in Hiroshima for a gyoza festival mm. with one of my coworkers and his fiance, who is uh, Japanese and she speaks no English. 
Um, and it was really neat because I was able to have a conversation with her and uh, also having spoken in more of these situations, I was able to understand more of what she was saying and not just in the test sense where I was listening for like specific nouns. I was able to understand the full sentence and understand the emotion she was conveying with the words. Amazing. So like you experienced textbook study and also like a random cafe talk. And then now you experienced Japan Language Factory. What was like a, if you pick up the differences, how was it? Um, I think the biggest difference is you, I think both sides, the goal for most people, I think for everyone is to speak the language. But when you use a textbook, you're approaching speaking the language by like learning the pieces. And so you fall into the trap of conversations fluid, but when you're trying to build a sentence or put the pieces together and you can't find the right piece in your mind, it's very hard to have a conversation. Uh, versus at Japanese Language Factory, it felt like we approached learning conversation by having conversation, which sounds so basic and obvious, but like you said, most people don't do that. So sitting with Chihiro Sensei and rather than learning, you know, grammar and structure, she would ask me, um, you know, what's the situation you want to be put in? And I would say, oh, this weekend I'm getting a haircut. She'd say, okay, well, let's go through that. You're going to walk in the door. What are you going to say? And I was like, uh, I don't know. She says, okay, <laughs> well, you know, we're going to say, uh, you know, you yaku shitain like if you're mm. trying to make a reservation for later or uh, you know if they ask you if you have a reservation you might say that you don't but you can say you know like do you have room um, mm -hmm. uh, and just different conversational situations rather than learning like yoyaku means reservation and mm. it there are 70 different ways to <laughs> conjugate it to be yeah. present or past or negative or positive. I couldn't tell you all of those, but I can go get my haircut versus there are a lot of people <laughs> that probably could tell you all 72, but they can't go get their haircut. So That's I think kind true. of that approach is a uh, very valuable, especially for people living in Japan. So like you actually, you know, start speaking Japanese and you said in Japanese, you went to Hokkaido, to Okinawa, like all over Japan. Like, yeah. uh, I'm sure there are so much like a fun story or like funny story. Like, uh, can you just pick up one? Like uh, when you speak this, that's happened something or did you have some like any experience when you speak Japanese? Um, I've had a lot of really fun experiences speaking Japanese. Uh, I think most the most fun experiences I've had are in izakayas. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's such a good opportunity to practice Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there have been a few times I've gone to different cities and sat in an izakaya and just tried striking up conversation either with the, the chef behind the table or someone sitting next to me. Um, but there was one time uh, not that long ago uh, right after I got back from the Yuki Matsuri in Sapporo, uh, I went to Tokyo to um, Sensoji, the temple. Mm -hmm. And I went to an izakaya near there and sat down and started talking to the guy behind the counter in Japanese. And uh, most Japanese people, in my experience, have the same reaction. Every time you speak Japanese, they get really excited. Like they're, they're excited to talk to the foreigner, hear about their experience. Mm. And then especially when you tell them, you know, like, oh, ninungurai, nihon ni uh, mas. Like I've lived in Japan for two years. They're like, oh, wow. Uh, and they really want to hear about like your experience with it. Um, and so I was talking to him about Sapporo and mm. I found out that he was actually from Sapporo. Wow. And so we started talking about skiing in Naseko and when we started talking about that, the guy next to us started talking about how he has snowboarded his whole life and he used to work for a company based out of Texas in America and he used to go there Whoa. and he would always try to snowboard in Texas. And the conversation went on and on until we got to the point that people had actually moved. And at the bar, there were about five of us sitting there all talking about either going to America or these different sports, these snow sports that we did, uh, and just kind of drinking and having a good time 
And it was really interesting just seeing everybody kind of come together and talk because as a foreigner, I had never experienced that in Japan. And it was kind of, uh, it makes you feel welcome. So like, it's my final actually question is uh, the message to hmm, the people who is not learning Japanese or who try to learn Japanese, what is actually the message to them? Maybe they're just discouraging. Maybe they just misunderstood to actually how to make a progress much faster. Um, I think what I would say is I think it all is born out of mindset. And I think you have to have the right mindset before you start. Um, more important than the studying when you're first getting started is having the right mindset about your studying. Learning Japanese is really hard. I would never try to tell someone, oh, learning a language is easy. Mm. Um, I have a master's degree in electrical engineering from one of the top universities in the world. And I can tell you, learning Japanese is harder than that was, <laughs> at least for me. It's very difficult. <laughs> um, so it's not that it's easy, um, but I think like those small wins we were talking about are so valuable. So I think trying to find the opportunity to get those makes a world of difference. Um, I also think having a good understanding, like you had said earlier, you know, a lot of people, myself included, went into studying a language with this mindset of, I want to know it all. And I think that can be really discouraging because if your goal from day one is, I want to be 100% fluent, just like every Japanese person, um, that takes a really long time. Mm. Uh, and I don't know that it's necessary. Uh, I have my coworker I mentioned earlier that he lives with his girlfriend who doesn't speak any English and they, they speak Japanese all the time and he's not a hundred percent fluent, but he's very good at Japanese. And it was through those baby steps. Um, and I think just practicing through the JLF method where you can kind of get those steps to change your life slowly makes a world of difference. And rather than studying a book and making, you know, a million note cards, I'm trying to learn kanji now, which is miserable. Mm. Um, making a million note cards. What's so much more fun is when you say, you know what, I want to practice Japanese tonight. So you go down to the local izakaya and you sit down and you promise yourself, you know, I'm going to strike up conversation with whoever sits next to me. Mm. Someone sits next to you and you start conversation and you go home and it doesn't even feel like you practiced. But you probably picked up a word here or there. Um, at the Gyoza Festival last weekend, I learned um, Ryoho for both because I was mm. trying to order two of them. Mm. And that wasn't from writing it down and studying it 10 times, but I'll remember it forever because there was a booth that had two different kinds of gyoza and I wanted both. And so I asked the lady how to say it and she said, oh, Ryoho. And now I'll always remember it because it's tied to a memory. And I think kind of living through your studying rather than making it a task and mm. making it a miserable experience, I think makes a world of difference. And that method of studying useful daily things that can change your life rather than studying vocabulary and grammar with the thought that maybe if I do this for a year, then I'll know everything. Cause you're not, if you study grammar and vocabulary for 10 years, you're still not going to know it all. <laughs> um, I mean, when you're young, you learn the fastest ever and you, you're in high school until you're 18, right? So it takes 18 years when you're at your best learning. So when you're older, it's going to take even longer and you have yeah. work and other tasks. So rather than going for that, go for having a happy life with useful language and study in that way. I think that's what I would tell someone. Are you expat living in Japan? You started living in Japan, you were super excited to communicate with locals. You can enjoy traveling, meeting people. And then you start using this textbook and you feel like, wow, that's so many. Elementary school textbook, another elementary school textbook, and how many hours should you study? Let's think one more time. In order to communicate like a normal guy, you can do everything in the basic everyday life. Should you finish all those textbooks, otherwise you won't understand what they're talking, you cannot express yourself, anything? First of all, there are always two ways to learn languages. One is documentational language, the other one is conversational language. It's like, you know, once upon a time, grandmother and grandfather are living somewhere somewhere 
or hey, what's up? How's it going? Which is conversational. What is the most effective way to learn how to speak Japanese? Textbooks can't talk to you, so you cannot improve your listening skill and pronunciation. How to communicate? So why Japanese children can speak Japanese so quickly? Because they are learning conversational Japanese. The good news is. In Japan Language Factory, we have a specific learning structure to improve your conversational Japanese. So you can join the conversation, you can understand what they're talking, you can respond quickly, and express what you are thinking. If you want to be able to speak Japanese as soon as possible, join our free consultation to figure out what is the fastest way to start speaking Japanese.